great uh, good morning all and uh, yeah so glide um, how many of us are already aware of glide great so glide is uh, as we all know actually most of us know image processing library and uh, glide on top of uh, many other image processing libraries provide uh, you know, support for gif animations and uh, glide allows plenty of configurations that you can do right and it is maintained by google actually googler not really google great and glide is a library uh, which is used in many you know, popular apps right and it is open sourced uh, it is used in google io uh, open source app it is used in google photos uh, which is probably your default gallery which you have disabled it's used by us so i work for a company named daily hunt so it's used extensively by us for variety of image processing so let's do some data collection uh, how many of you use glide for your uh, projects okay how many of you use picasso what else you guys are using some of you didn't even raise your are you guys using any image processing library or it's like a pure text app that you are writing okay so how many of you have heard about glide i mean not from this talk before fine i think except for some of us who are uh, really focused on their laptop um, many of us have used so that's why i start up talking about gradle not glide today so this is something which we have heard as well it just that gradle never hears us screaming at it so yeah let's talk about gradle and why did i spend the 2 minutes in talking about glide so these two have some common stuffs they are extremely configurable uh, and they have so much of uh, functionalities that uh, you can use in your app which actually both are same although they call those as two different features by both of them and glide actually has a large code base that i can use as a experimental you know rat for explaining gradle so that's why uh, you know i just wanted to know if people had already known about glide and i didn't want to scare you people with a uh, gradle glide in the beginning great uh, so what is this uh, list this is actually the list of modules that is there in the source code um, of glide so why am i listing this you are going to see these terms here and there so you don't have to remember now i mean we don't have to remember anything in android we can google but but this is a link which probably you might want to refer later because the fourth version of glide source code with uh, some um, improvements i would say some deviations gradle i mean glide team would say are done so some of the scripts that we will see uh, from here till the end of the talk are me finding will be here in this link great uh, so on that note let's get started the first important thing how many of you break your code so how many of you develop so how many of you have developed without breaking anything in your app 
Actually, nobody raised their hand. <laughs> Great. Uh, so every Android project usually starts like this. Uh, we create one module, we create one package, uh, we create one Java file. Actually, we don't. Android does. We just create a new project and that's how we start. And then what we do, we just go crazy. We add more Java files. We add more packages. We realize that it is not enough. We add more modules and at one point of time, it's our project. So, there is a module which is actually copy legacy code. There is a module which is latest screen, which is latest screen one. I don't know which is latest. We just have different names for those modules in our code. Actually, they mean this. That's exactly the case. So, what happens in this code is uh, module ownership is a challenge. Uh, it's like nobody knows who owns which part of the code. Please don't lie to me that in your team everybody knows who's, what is their ownership boundary. At least your managers don't want <laughs> you to know that boundary. And the code reuse become difficult because there are so many things in one project that if you have to make some changes and then see whether your architecture and design are still intact, it becomes difficult, right? And known. So what do we do? Actually, Gradle is actually the problem and Gradle is also the solution. So what you can do is you can create multiple smaller projects from your project. Uh, this will need your code to be clean. So before asking me a question, what if my project is not you know, breakable into multiple modules, please go and refactor. So you should be able to break your big large project into smaller modules or smaller set of modules, right? And uh, instead of creating cross dependencies, you just uh, upload them into a local Maven repository. I am not showing the code here for this one because it is a custom task which actually you can just copy paste from uh, Gradle, which we know how to do. We have, we have to just search in Stack Overflow and you will get it and then you have to copy paste and it works. And uh, instead of referencing your dependencies as modules, uh, dependencies can be referenced as you know, remote dependencies like, like you would do for a library which is actually available from uh, you know, some remote place or server, Maven, J Center, whatever. So once again, this is same image which I showed uh, before. This is the original glide case and then that's a segment from Gradle script uh, where actually we have uh, the dependency shown and there is a blue highlight um, on the dependency side where you see compile project library is the dependency of Flickr. So this is Flickr's modules build at Gradle and it has a direct dependency on library. Um, so this actually causes all other modules to be uh, required uh, for Flickr to compile. Uh, how do we break it? Uh, so you just move only Flickr stuff out and compilation error screams at you and then you realize that remaining things are required. You just create another project for this. And creating another project for, for it is as simple as just creating another settings at Gradle and copy pasting only required stuff which we do well every day. And the end structure what happens is you actually have two projects. One project on the left which has only three modules and other project on the right uh, essentially has all other library stuff and uh, here there is a change in the dependencies. We have now instead of uh, linking or uh, putting a dependency for the library module, we are now putting a dependency for the glide uh, library directly. Uh, actually the sample app should have been like this but somehow they decided to put it like a direct dependency on their library. So, now, what happens is when you are building Flickr app, you are most probably uh, going to rebuild only three modules, even if your uh, you know, scripts have some issue or things like that. Remaining rest of the stuffs are going to be kept aside. Um, 
honestly if you go through your code and then go through your uh, release cycle and the changes that you have made in your code most of the time our code will remain constant for i mean 80% of our code will uh, will remain untouched partially because there is no change required partially because we are afraid whether it will break something else more for the second reason so that 80% of the code you can just move it to a separate project and then keep it there and you have to just add those stack overflow copied you no know, maven uploading uh, script and then it will just upload and then you can use so i am actually directly accessing uh, glide um, dependency here because i didn't set up a specific js center for this one but you can easily do that uh, with your uh, just you can dedicate one system for that and then it will work because unless you are uh, you are open sourcing your apps code which will probably get you in trouble don't do that unless you are you know team say so uh, it's okay to do this uh, you can just keep one system in the corner of your uh, you know floor and then let it become your you know j center server great uh, second item is composite builds so this is something relatively new and uh, because it is not like a project structure which we all have talked about i thought of searching in net to find out uh something which we can show in this game i promise you just open your chrome browser and then search for composite build and the images image search result shows this as the first one i don't know whether gradle team was playing a practical joke on us when they call that feature composite build but actually the feature is not this uh, ugly the composite build feature is like a very intelligent state input it is a composite build is simply a build that includes other builds this is taken from gradle site and this simple line actually makes the thing what we did in the previous slide very easy so if you see uh, in our case we had um, the previous uh, slide where two projects are created from a single project unfortunately when you want to build your ci you wouldn't want to build uh, two things separately and then clubbing them together or use j center for every build so, i mean it will be crazy if ci has to first build one project and then upload everything to maven and then build another project using that dependency so for that case uh, you have composite build so the settings that gradle is as simple as this you have to just say these are the two projects and then you have to um, and you, it's just including build uh, library including build uh, app and then it works uh, there are some caveats there are some advantages we'll just have a look um, so there is a catch here actually if you see if you would just do this uh, your earlier case of dependency being directly uh, relying on the module will come into picture because otherwise you will once again go through the mes uh, you know j center and maven loop um okay composite build actually helps composing multiple builds obviously the advantage and it is very useful for large project please don't apply it on a small project i don't know i think they are warning us uh, that don't apply it on a small project but there are couple of negative things uh, one it is recently introduced so it's available only from gradle 3 so if you are going to take a chance and uh, it's going to become probably a standard in few months but till then uh, you have to set your ci build uh, you no know, gradle setup to be pointing to 3.x version uh, 3.1 i think it's stable for composite and um, which also means that it is not yet supported in android studio i think it is already supported in intellij idea uh, i don't have idea about that so if you have installed intellij idea please go and explore it's a homework for you and declaring dependency so the problem which i just mentioned where uh, if you are going for this setup you don't if you don't want to uh, really read the dependency every time from your local uh, j center or maven for your ci build um, maybe for your developer build you will be you will be taking from there because you will not be building your no library project regularly uh, but for the ci build probably um, Uh, we have to manage it in a different way and uh, that is uh, declaring dependencies so in a module um, this is a good old way of uh, declaring dependency 
uh, where we just write compile and then say and say so and so version number and uh, the recently suggested ways are to do this so you create that, uh, those versions as a separate uh, constants in your root build that gradle and use only those constants uh, here so i am a java developer not groovy developer so i will be using terms which are actually from it constant is not even java actually c okay but uh, this is i don't know what is the name of that one in groovy uh, it's functional programming everything is final anyways and uh, dependency that gradle uh, so this is the approach that we should do uh, if we are going by that approach unfortunately so you have to create one separate dependency that gradle and then create a series of dependency names and then the definition uh, what is the difference we will if you see the case of this dependency dot gradle this is associated with uh, one of the projects so if you are, if your uh, dev setup is having this dependency dot gradle and if it is having everything included or imported as uh, remote dependencies similarly you can create another dependency dot gradle for your ci setup and there you can actually directly uh, import or uh, create dependency for your project modules um, using direct module names or otherwise you can uh, go for any other approach uh, so there are some other things which we can do if we are keeping this separately and the difference here is you are keeping the full name of the library separately and this also has an advantage and disadvantage advantage uh, every um, actually not just version update even the library update is kept in one place all your dependency libraries are lying in one place you are just picking and using whichever you want in your individual modules so you, you you can easily go and check what all your dependencies and update them um, but um, yeah, there is another advantage that no op lib so for example if you are using crashlytics or uh, any other uh, such you know stuffs which you would probably need only in field in this dev dependency dot gradle instead of pointing to the original um, dependency you can point to some local dependency which you have made as a no op stuff more like a mock uh, of that library and efficient you know effectively you will probably uh, avoid uh, this causing a delay in your build time as well as this causing you know some random uh, analytics data generated in your uh, you know server that is the advantage of this uh, dependency model and uh, one there is disadvantages if you use this way uh, so if you see the first two options we can actually see the updates being uh, shown as warning uh, here so the yellow mark actually says there is an update for you but here actually you will not see it because it is becoming more like a string uh, it doesn't work that way uh, going to the next one uh, it's about securing passwords um, passwords mostly uh, things related to your key store and uh, why would you do that so there may be a scenario where teams are working from different sites and uh, you don't know what is the security level uh, measure that is maintained everywhere and uh, there could be freelancers who are coming in only for few days it's not that we don't trust freelancers it's just that human error is possible where somebody unknowingly post it in their facebook wall and and some might return from us and then join your team this can happen very i mean with the current scenario i wouldn't be surprised if <laughs> and uh, load password from environment variable this is a solution to that problem um, so don't keep your password in your code base don't check in into your uh, thing don't keep it as a parameter in your Uh, no build command because that means you have to give it to everyone voluntarily so it's just that in your ci server uh, hoping your ci server is actually admin protected and you have only access uh, keep it in the environment variables of that server and then read it from there uh, the there are few four five lines but actually the key is that system dot get env of any constant that you want to access and if you are using uh, jenkins which i uh, which is the only ci server that i know uh, i have used so you can actually directly set it in the um, 
configuration page itself and if you are having that protected uh, with uh, no accounts then you are fine you don't have to expose your key store password uh, to you no know, many people flavor dimension um, this is uh, more many of us have used flavor i think uh, i'm sure if you are having a version which is for pre which is version uh, another app version for paid you would have used it if you are supporting multiple language where you create different apps for different language you might have used it uh, or in our case uh, we are having different configuration for qa dev and other things so there we are actually uh, using it um, so the advantage of adding dimension is you can mix and match so if you are having multiple variations of app uh, with multiple flavors then you can actually mix match so essentially um, there are three uh, flavors qa staging and production and i want to provide uh, log enabled and log disabled build for both then i can just add one dimension actually it is barely visible on the top so you, i have added one more dimension log and then i am just adding them and it works so that is the way to do it and uh, it's very simple to do in terms of configuration it is very less configuration and it will actually inherit most of the basic properties from the other things and it it can increase the negative part being it can increase the build time okay. so you can exclude uh, redundant uh, combinations uh, by using this script i don't want to go into the script you can copy paste and it will work gradle talk cannot complete without talking about build performance so as a customer i have included this but i don't want to uh, go through the full optimization procedure we'll just concentrate on few things measurement uh, we all know about i think many of us would have used this iphone iphone profile if you just add it to your android studio it works right and it doesn't because you have different developers using different type of machines you have to ask each and every one to do this and then take the data and then find out um, the other way around is to use build scan plugin uh, once again it is very easy to integrate you have to just include this in your uh, root build at gradle and it works and uh, optimize it um, i am not going through the multiple optimization procedures i have just given some uh, you no know, kind of tips or probably suggestions please set up your dexin process uh, you no know, pre dex libraries and other things false in your ca configuration because sometimes sometimes in rare cases you might get a build created uh, which is not actually in line with what you would actually want from your code uh, so the reusing caching and other things there can be a remote possibility of something going wrong so please don't do that and in gradle properties once again uh, in the the top one is actually ci the bottom one is actually dev so you set according to the server don't keep one common Uh, logic for all the you know dev setup or uh, whatever you are using in your dev and whatever you are using in ci ci might have more ram uh, ci might not have more ram so please have separate files and then set accordingly and once again the parallel and enable build cache once again they are also kept false in ci just to ensure that you don't have to do that right you don't want uh, thing repeating i just want to remind the title again because the next item says don't use gradle the effective way to use gradle is not to use gradle but how to do that use buck you don't want to create new setup again and for that reason there is a plugin okay buck it's very easy to integrate once again you have to copy paste this in your root dot root build dot gradle and then when you run again it will create steps you are using gradle to kill itself actually so you are using gradle plugin to create you no know, bug rules and uh, gradle plugin to generate uh, sorry it's a bug wrapper which is getting created uh, from that gradle plugin it is many times faster than gradle this is what is claimed i didn't give any number because it will change depending on your configuration and stuffs it didn't even work for me first and i had to fight it out to work it make it work you it's still under development it's actively developed uh, that is there uh, 
uh, one case is it's not supported by Google, maybe because it is not in feature parity with other things, uh, I mean Gradle yet. So, okay, uh, once you have done this, like once you have applied this plugin and once you have created OK Buck rules, what is that going to happen for your you know, Gradle scripts? You, you have written a lot of Gradle scripts till then and what are going to be, what is going to happen to that? They are going to be as valuable as this 500 rupees note. Actually, it is even each and every 500 rupees note is now as valuable as this just photo. So, on that note, literally, thanks. Uh, I don't know whether I have. Uh, yeah, we have a couple of minutes uh, for. Uh, any question? Someone there? Brave soul? In the meantime, you can uh, look at those links. Uh, I my no LinkedIn is my Facebook, and your story went crazy someday, and writer wrote a story about me. So, hey Arun, I have a question. Awesome. Uh, you talked about dependency dot rat. Where you, yeah, you wrote external equal to something, and then you use that. But the problem with that approach is if you make a change there, like when you make change in Gradle file, it shows you auto sync option. But if you make change in dependency dot Gradle, like if you push it remotely and you pull it, like and it dependency dot Gradle change, it does not show you auto sync. Is there a way to enable auto sync for that file? Uh, so for our case, we haven't actually found uh, a way to do that. But uh, how I had managed in our case was just to, I mean. Most of the time in our build, uh, see, build in CI, it's going to be a clean build, and uh, this dependency change happens in CI as well as dev. Yeah. And uh, it's more of a manual process where we just say, okay, sync once and things like that. But um, there is, as you said, it's again another case where it doesn't uh, work well with Android Studio. That is the problem. Yeah, that's the issue. Like, I mean, it's there. It's very much okay. there. Good. If you solve it, please let us know. Any other questions? Good then. So, everything understood or nothing was clear? Thank you guys.